think he just wanted to make my life miserable, really, because he was miserable. And that's what narcissists do. They project their pain onto other people. He wanted, he was running me down. He was finding fault. Nothing was ever good enough. I did most of the work with the kids. He was not a hands-on dad. He would take them to the, to the movies and to fairs and to exhibits. He was the fun dad, doing the fun things, uh, looking like the good guy. And I was the one doing the dirty work with the kids. And of course, I love my children. I was going to do it, but it was hard. As a result, I was miserable. And worse, I had developed a victim's mindset. And I, I don't play a victim, but I had developed a victim's mindset. I felt compelled to keep giving to this vampire that was just sucking the energy out of me. But I was young with children, and where else was I going to go? Within three years, uh, we were divorced. My, my emotional health uh, started to deteriorate um, before my father passed away. My father was an excellent uh, father. He was an excellent husband to my mom, and he was an excellent provider. And he was uh, my best friend in a lot of ways. Uh, I'm laid back like my father. My mother was more intense, and um, I could sit down and talk to my father without any drama, get, get real advice, and walk away feeling good about what he said. But he was gone now, and he had passed away, and I had lost the support system, and I felt like my right arm was actually cut off. Um, he was an airline pilot, and he uh, was a very kind and hum humble man, and he helped a lot of people financially. He helped family and friends financially. And he didn't always get the money back, but he didn't care. He, he was just a kind person, wanted to help people, of course, that were in need. And he didn't care about that. And um, I started to miss him, miss him quite a bit. He had a very dry sense of humor. He was so funny. He used to call family gatherings bun struggles. And he used to, when we were kids and I, we'd come home from school, he'd go, how are Jim and Art today? Jim and Art, you know? He, was, he had a very dry sense of humor, and he would say some crazy things, and I really miss it. Anyway, um, my sister used to say, Dad is enlightened, and he was. He was a very enlightened person. I was similar to my father as far as being laid back and sort of like um, going with the flow, and we had that connection. We had that, uh, had that together. A few years after my uh, dad had passed, my mom took me aside, and she said, you know, Lynn, I know you took your father's death really hard. And uh, I know it's hard for you. And I says, yeah, you're right, Mom, I did. Because she was getting older, and I didn't want to, you know, I wanted to stay positive with her, but she, she knew, she could tell. Um, it started about four months after my dad had passed, and um, I started to, f to fall into feelings of hopelessness, and I fell into deep depression. Um, uh, like, I had feelings there was no light at the end of the tunnel. I, could, I had friends and family around me, but I still felt alone. I felt alone in my thoughts. And my life was just sort of going along with the flow. There was no joy, there was no spontaneity. I just felt um, depressed and I felt hopeless. I started to feel, and I've never felt this way before. There was no joy anymore. Things, things got worse. I started missing appointments and um, I started having a drink to relax. Then I started to have two. The death of, the, of, my, of my father had really affected me, and as I look back now, I should have gone for counseling, but I didn't. I had never known this grief before, and I wasn't, I didn't know what to do about it. Um, the temporary relief from the alcohol took away that edge of that depressing feeling, and I felt good when I, you know, would have a few drinks. One evening I was up in my washroom getting ready to go out with my friend. And I had had a glass of wine, and my mother, or my daughter, 14-year-old daughter, came up to the bathroom, knocking on the door. And I was putting makeup on to go out, and um, she said, Mom, are you okay? And I had the door closed. She goes, Mom, are you okay? I said, yes, I'm fine. And she goes, Mom, have you been drinking? And I've always been honest with my kids. I've always been honest, and like, you know, that's the way you do. But... I, I never, I always was a person that took responsibility for what she did, but here I was denying. 
I would say, no, what are you talking about? Drinking? I've not been drinking. And I looked at, I, I stood there and I thought, wow, you need help. I didn't like the person that I had become and I knew that I had to make some changes. But how could I change? I was depressed, what, what could I do? I knew I was in a downward spiral, spiral and I was going down and if I didn't change, life was not gonna look pretty. My first thought is that I have to get out of this victim mentality. Giving and giving in to my husband, and now my ex-husband had been very painful. How could I do this? How could I shift the focus from myself to others? Suddenly the light came on, give. When I give to others, it takes the focus off me and my problems, and I'm helping other people that are in need. Start giving. So I thought of a, a center uh, where I used to live, and you can give food to families that need food. And the families have to be screened before they can um, get the food. So I drove up to the grocery store, and I looked, walked up and down the aisles looking for products that families would like for, for, uh, to eat. And I was walking up and down, and I had this great feeling. All of a sudden, I felt great. You know, I'm going to be helping people that need food. I, four, four bags of groceries, uh, paid for it, and I got in my car and I drove to the center, and I walked in and I took the bags and I uh, put, gave them to the receptionist and I said, here's food I would like to donate to, to some families. And she looked at me with a big smile and she says, thank you so much. We really appreciate your help. Thank you so much. And I drove away thinking, wow, you know, I feel great, but more importantly, I've helped people that need food. And then suddenly a light came on. I've been giving to my ex-husband, who was just taking and taking and taking, giving but not feeling good, but here I was giving and I felt so good. So what was happening was I was giving to the wrong person. I was giving to someone that didn't appreciate it and I was giving to someone who really didn't care, who just wanted me to keep giving. And here I was giving to families that, was, that, that were, would be so excited to get this food, like they'd be ecstatic, right? So that experience made me realize that there's a huge difference between giving by choice and giving um, as a victim. When you give by choice, you, you, um, you feel empowered. And when you're, you're giving as a victim, you feel like it's a never-ending process and you're never going to get anything in return. I have grown and changed immensely uh, since those years. I have studied the, the power of the mind. Um, I make much better choices and decisions. And through um, the power of hypnosis and touching the subconscious mind, I now live a very positive and happy life, full of joy. I have a great, super relationship with my children and um, a super, super life in general. I just feel so much better. I'm actually going to become a certified uh, hypnotist in next month. <laughs> um, I practice self-care and, and I swim three times a week. And uh, self-care is very important for me, to, me personally because it keeps me uplifted. So what I did in my life was I took a lemon and I made lemonade. And someone told me not everyone can do that. But I did it. You see, if you want something bad enough, you'll do it. Um, if you want it, you'll, you will manifest it. That's what I did. It took small steps each day, but these small steps add up to bigger steps, and then these bigger steps take you to another level in your life, and then you're up a level, and then you're, ne you're nearer to the next level, and you keep moving up, and that's what happened to me. You see, every cloud has a silver lining. So I'm, a, I'm now a relationship coach, and I I hope women that are in toxic relationships, because I've been through it, and I have an ex-best friend, she's a full-blown narcissist, and I had to give her up. And um, now I coach women that have, are feeling the pain, because I've healed and I've gone through it, and I know, I know the pain. You have to know about narcissism, I've been educated in it, and um, I've experienced it firsthand, so I want to help other people. So the next time that you are feeling like hopeless or depressed, do what I did and just start giving. Like, who can I give to today? What can I do to help someone today? Just go out, you know, give someone a nice 
buy someone a scarf, do something for someone. It takes the focus off you and it puts, uh, you're helping others. So thank you very much. Thank you.